So, ladies and gents, we now make our way onto the class plot at uh, Scott Grass Week Week 2, and I'm with Mr. Dean Coy, who you've probably seen many times in some of our videos, uh, depending on when you're watching this. We did uh, recently a big class in grass event with you guys, so you were pretty much showing everything off uh, on that occasion. Obviously, you've got a big line of machines here today at Scott Grass, but for now, we're just going to focus on your brand spanking new 4 Rotor Rex. So, Dean, take it away. I mean, give it some sizes where it sits in the family model numbers. So, for this year, we've got a new generation of 4 Rotor Rakes. So in the past, we had two models, a line of 3600 or 4000. We now have three. So, 4700 goes up to about 12 and a half meters. The machine you see here today, 13.6 meters. And then the big line of 4900 up to 15 meters. Yeah. So, we've got Slightly smaller machine that offers the same working width as a maximum as the old generation 3600. This machine here, a nice new model to us because it bridges the gap between an old 36 and a new and a 4000. And then the big flagship line of 4900. But by far, this is our most popular model. So when you look at working widths, a big advantage with the new machines, and I think why they've been so popular, especially the line of 4900, is we have a lot of difference between minimum and maximums. So if you think a new line of 4900 at its minimum is almost the same width as the old line of 3600 yeah. used to be, and at its maximum it's 15 metres. So for the guys that are doing cuts every five or six weeks for low, um, low yield, high quality, great working width. And then if you're in the heavy stuff like I've been today, you can shut it in nine, down to 10 metres. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. So, I mean, let's I mean, talk us through a few details of this new so 4800. When you, when you look at the machine, it looks very, very different to before. First of all, the colour scheme is very different. So any the light grey, we call it. It's a little panel you see there that says class. A lot more green and dark grey. But in behind the paintwork, the design of the chassis is very, very different. So um, to give it its true name, the frame you see here is a trapezoid. So much like a crane boom, much deeper in its dimensions, a lot wider as well. So structurally, it adds a lot more rigidity to the machine. You also have the benefits under the little guard you see just here. Because it's so deep, we can actually put a lot of the hydraulics and electric components oh, right. inside. So you could put them within the chassis and yeah, keep so them all protected. Yeah, so they stay clean, they stay dry, yeah. they don't get walloped by anything. So a lot of it's buried inside the chassis because it's a lot bigger. It's also made of a new alloy, so it's a lot stronger. So again, a lot stronger machine than before. And even with the booms, they're completely new. So it's like a three-stage design. So you've got a, a first, a second, and a third stage internally. And that's what gives us the ability to go very wide, very narrow, and also four meter transport yeah. height without taking the time. You put a bit of scorpion sort of, uh, yeah. you know. Well, even more so than that, if you actually look inside the stages just there, you see the plastic wear pads. Again, they're just like you find on telehandlers. So when this machine is in its, I don't know, eighth, tenth season and its second, third hand, yeah. we can replace the pads and still keep it working. Keep it all nice for, and tight. Yeah, for a lot yeah. longer. Yeah. Drive it. line's also new. So especially if you look at the front, PTO back to the new four-way gearbox. And then it splits and comes forward to the rotors you see here. And then it goes backwards to the actual rotor you see there. Done it for a couple of reasons. So number one, when you extend through minimum and maximum working width with a straight drive line, so if they were all underneath the rotors, for example, yeah. you've got a big difference between the minimum and the maximum overlap on the PTO tubes. When you come forward and then go backwards, minimum maximum doesn't affect the overlap on the tubes anywhere near as much. So right. this part is a lot stronger. So you can keep a nice overlap on this yep. at all times. Yeah, correct. Yeah, right. That's where you limit if you have a drive line that just goes straight underneath the rotors. Yeah. We knew that ourselves with a line of 3600. Also, when you look at the UJs in here, here, and in the center, when you lift and lower this machine for headland turns, they don't go through much of an angle change, so it just extends the grease intervals as well. So this is pretty much the angle that it works out all the time. Yeah, and you see they're fairly straight, ever so slightly off, which you need for a UJ, but they don't go through much of a change at all. Yeah. And they're new for the four rotor rakes and the twin rotor rakes, they've been updated as well, just in there, as opposed to having cam clutches, they're now friction clutches. So they're a lot smoother in their operation. When they slip, they don't put shock load through the drive line. And when you don't they... get the rattle effect. <laughs> yeah, you, you say you don't hear it like you would have yeah, done yeah. before. And also with a friction clutch, if this was to go through a bit of a hollow in the field, the clutch can slip, but the rotor will still turn obviously a bit, a bit slower. Yeah. As a cam type clutch, it pretty much is stopped. Stop dead. And then yeah. when you get out of the hole, you then sweep a big lump into the swath. So this is a lot smoother for the swath. Yeah, it well. may slow down, but it does it's keep still going. Keep rotating, yeah. yeah. Rotor design is still pretty much the same. We haven't really changed that. Still has the oil immersed cam track, oil immersed crane, in opinion. Still uses the Profit Tyne arms. Um, one new option though you see, especially useful today where it's wet, are the rotor wheels. So if you have the um, wider uh, chassis tires, the, so 710s or 800 chassis tires, you get the nine and a half inch wide rotor wheels. 
when you have the standard 500 or optional 600 tires, you get the six inch rotor Right, wheels. so that's been useful today then. Well, yeah, if you look at our plot just over there, yeah. you see it's like a bit of a pond. So especially where you have the, the wider wheels, helps to carry the weight a lot better. That's it. A new design as well, another new patent for us as well was on the rotor suspension. So especially with this point you see just here, you see the two springs? Yeah. And effectively this spring and this spring are pushing against that bracket. So you see it in work, they're effectively neutral but a spring against the spring acts like a damper. Mm. So when this machine is working across the field, it's a lot smoother than before because you don't get the same rattle. So that is just like a shock absorber on your car. I was going to say, it's like a two-way shock absorber. Yeah, it yeah. is. So you can get faster forward speeds, less shock going through the rotor drive line, and also this new trailing arm. So if you look just here, we're pulling the rotors from this position back to here. So the up and down and your left and right um, contouring is a lot greater than the old 3600. Right, so it's a little bit more trailed rather yeah. than sat right underneath it. And the big advantage as well, most of the weight of the rotors on the rear wheels, um, probably only maybe a quarter to a third of it's on the front wheels. The reason you do that, especially in very undulating fields, it helps to get the, the rotor to lift over the obstacle as yeah. opposed to having an even weight distribution. Uh, again, nice little features on the rear rotors. So an old line of 3600 swath width adjustment was done by pinholes. Right. On a new 4800, um, which most of the customers have upgraded to, it's hydraulic, so you can okay. do it in the cab. Um, nice little feature as well, you can move one front rotor in and out, so maybe to go around a water trough or a hedge or get into the corner of a field, you can move one rotor on its own. And then the whole system is much smoother to operate. If you just look here, every rotor has a position sensor like this. So we know when the rotors are coming down to work, it's a very, very soft landing. So yeah. much smoother than we had on the previous generation because we control and measure the position of all four rotors. All right, so as it's coming down, it crosses that sensor, it's, it basically tells it to Give yeah, it, give it's, it a it's, soft a lovely cushion, it's a lovely cushion stop. In fairness, uh, a line of 4900 with a rotor seven meters from the chassis yeah. has a smoother landing than a twin rotor rake, which really? is maybe three meters from the <laughs> chassis. Yeah. Spot on. Well, good to uh, yeah, good to get a bit, bit of info on the yeah, yeah, well, latest rakes. It's nice to see it again. It's our first like public show with a new twin rotor and new four rotor rakes, apart from our class and grass event that you came to a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. In terms of uh, that sort of dreaded availability at the moment, are these sort of out and out of order? And They are all sold out pretty much. So right. the, uh, the good and the bad, the good is we have lots of inquiries, lots of orders, lots of machines sold. The bad, same with everything, it's just delays in coming, getting the parts through. That's it. Most of the machines are all here now. This is actually a customer's machine we borrowed uh, for the show day. This one's heading up to, uh, well, staying here in Scotland. Right. Um, but yeah, most of the stuff is through, but yeah, doing right. our best with what we can really. That's it. Dean, spot on. Thank no you worries. very much for that. Right, ladies and gents, on with our little tour of uh, the Quake 2 Scott Grass event. And we are now on the Cointhwaite Group plot which is uh, representing John Deere at the event. And I'm joined by Mr. Tim Hodgkinson, who's going to talk us through one of the key products and one product that you look after in particular, which is, well, it's your big chopper to a minute. So, big yeah, the, uh... Tell us about your big chopper. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, today we've brought along the 8500 uh, John Deere. Uh, it's uh, 585 horsepower, uh, John Deere engine in this. Um, the 639 grass pickup on the front. We've spec this with dual header drive, so the pickup wheel tines run independently, so you can sort of overspeed or control that to, to different crop types. Yeah. Um, quick coupler for unlatching and what have you, so easy to get the headers on and off for doing maintenance and stuff. Um, so just uncouple that, one handle and your headers off. The drive down at the bottom is quick attach as well. Um, we can be in and out of these these headers, looking at your knives to check in the morning within sort of three minutes. So yeah. nice and quick for day. I was say because like with your feed rollers, it's like a big wardrobe. It just opens up. Yeah, just opens straight. There, open, easy access. Like I say, just for checking. Some some uh, say do a V open. It's a lot lot quicker to be honest. Yeah. Just to to get right in there and plenty of room. That's it. So like I say, this is the eight thousand five hundred. Yeah. So this is one of your narrow body machines. Yeah, standard body machine. Yeah. Uh, above this, there's a, an 8.6. So we go from an 8.1, um, which is a nine liter John Deere engine, an 8.2, which is nine. Then we've got an 8.3, 4, 5, and an 8.6 in the standard body. Uh, and then obviously we move up to the nines. Right, so what's in your, I mean, 
Wow, Rhea, what's in your uh, wide bodies in the 9000 series? So new, a bit of a change now. So new for new for next year, we've got the 9.5, 9.6, and also coming is a 9.7. So they'll have an 18 litre John Deere straight six engine. So that's been developed to, to go into those 9000s. The 9.8 and the 9.9, they will still be a, a Libra engine. So V12, V12 that, uh... 24 litres. Um, so a 9.5 will be 700 horsepower. A 96, 750, um, and a 97 will be 800. Right. Um, all with uh, an IPM power increase as well, yeah. about, uh, give or take 30 horsepower. So yeah, they, they should be good performing machines. And yeah. key feature, no add blue. So big thing. Yeah, right. they've developed that engine for no add blue. Clever stuff. And then like, say so you got the V12s in the big two. V so how many horse are the big two now? Uh, 870 and 970 in, right. the, in the two, uh, eight, in, in the 98 and the 99. Yeah. So you've got a few donkeys then. A few right. ponies under the bonnet. Yeah, that's it. Well, speaking of bonnet and, uh, bonnets and ponies, uh, yeah, Let's have on. a quick look. Give us a big reveal, Tim. Come on. Let's have a look in the it's back. It's like you prepared that, isn't it? It's like I prepared it earlier. Yeah. It's ready. <laughs> <laughs> go on then, talk us through. I mean, talk us through your layout, really, because you go for the, the length way sort of style. Yeah, than... so the idea of that is people have different opinions. We say good for cooling. We don't really lose any power through that distribution gearbox on the other side. So, yeah, good cooling. We don't really have problems with these at all with overheating. Um, yeah, good, good airflow down the side. We've got easy access oil tank um, above us here. All your um, pumps and, and whatever motors in, in the line there. Everything's nice and easy and quick to get to service-wise. The panels above the, the wheels come off. Yeah. Um, got a compressor at the back. And then your additive dosing tank. Um, so 325 litres go in the back here of high volume. And then uh, up on the side, up on the side of the machine, we also have a low volume tank as well. Right. So uh, yeah, nice and compact and, and neat in there. So you got lots of demos lined up this season? Or? We've got a few lined up, yeah. There's, uh, yeah, there's plenty of uh, plenty of interest for these machines now. Uh, there's, we're getting quite a few out there. And we're, we're running the Harvest Lab on this as well today. So uh, we run that on all our machines. Um, constituents, so NDF, ADF, sugars, proteins, um, ME new for this year as well. Uh, and that all sent, gets sent wirelessly back to the operations center. So, you know, farmers and contractors, yeah. they can see what's going they on, what's on their in, land. It, so, in real time. Yeah. And then, yeah, with yours, you can take it off and yeah, we analyze have, slurry and whatever analyze else. Slurry, and... Yeah. yeah, within probably 15 minutes, you can have that uh, on your umbilical system and it's analyzing your NP and Ks. And, and then you can tell your fertilizer to suit. So yeah, yeah. plenty of uh, plenty of uses for that unit. That's it. Um, and do you think that, you know, with that that sensor on there, do you think that started off a lot of conversations now in terms of foragers and, oh, 100%, and what people, 100%, yeah. people thinking more about what they can do and stuff like that? Yeah, we're having more, more customers now that think it's more than just chopping grass now. You know, that, that sensor will even control the chop length that's according to dry matter as well. Yeah. So big thing on uh, clamp uh, consistency and feed uh, for, for obviously more milk. Also, people want to know what the land's doing. Gone are the days of just slapping a load of fertilizer, especially a thousand pound a ton. Exactly. Yeah. So we've had, we've had certain customers this time that have saved variable rate up to about six ton. So that equates just on the first cut. So that could be six, six grand of saving yeah. just by you know, just going knowing into depth and knowing what's in there. Yeah. So it's a, it's a massive saving, um, or there's potential for massive savings by, by doing that. So yeah, it has generated conversations. And I think, as everyone knows, John Deere are at the forefront of that sort of technology. They've been doing it for years and yeah, it's it's what we do. Yeah, so I was going well. Tim, thank you very much. Thank you. It's been spot on that. I'll let you get back to some customers, hopefully. Hopefully we'll, we'll get some cracking grass, in a yeah. bit. Yeah. So good, thank you. All right, nice one. Cheers. Ladies and gents, we're now on to the new Holland plot at uh, Scott Grass 2022. I'm joined now by Mr. David Redmond, who you may have seen before in some of our other New Holland videos. Uh, previously with David, we've done, uh, what we've done, we've done product focus on T7HD, yeah. which we're going to kind of have a quick look at again, because we've got some new features on there as well. So like I say, we've done a T7HD product focus video. Go check that out for more information on the T7. Also, as well, we've done, we've just done while we've been here at Scott Grass, 
We've done a uh, product focus video on the new Pro Belt Crown Bailey as well. So that's good. So when that's out, go check that one out as well. But for now, yeah, T7 HD. Let's Dave, have a look. That's yeah. it. Let's have a look. David, where are at? I mean, just remind for those who don't know T7 HD, number of models, what's going on? Okay, so um, if you recall, going back to our video, we had a little look around last time and the T7 HD comes in three models. There's a 275, a 290 and this one, which is the range top in 315. Uh, as you can see here, this one's in our blue power livery, so the looking the dark, smart, looking smart, looking dark blue. smart. Raised decals, you can see there. She's got some nice lighting, LED lighting packages uh, on the tractor as well. Leather bound steering wheel, uh, blue powered seat. So yeah, uh, and uh, that all new interior all as well. All new interior. So yeah. this is a totally bigger cab. So uh, it's a larger cab on this tractor than the previous HD. It's quieter, so it runs 66 decibels. Actually, noise level, so it's industry leading inside the cab. So she's nice and quiet on here. Um, also, this tractor, uh, you can see uh, we've got this central tyre inflation fitted to it as well. So it's yeah. something that uh, the tractor is now central tyre inflation ready. Uh, so when it comes from the plant, it's uh, or from the production plant, uh, we can fit this on as an aftermarket system, which runs through our, our screen. Uh, the tractor is pre-drilled for it, so the rear axles are pre-drilled to take the tyre inflation. So if we wanted to have right. a look in a second, we can have a look inside got there. You. And then we've got the system on the front Yeah, here. so you so can really see it on the front because it's external, external on the front. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the tractor itself, um, we're, we're finding a lot more people want to take care of the soil. I mean, it's pretty wet here today. At, yeah, to grass yeah try to take, yeah, yeah. <laughs> take care of that. <laughs> take care of that. But uh, as you can see, uh, it's mounted. So the, the quicker we can let the air out, and then with the tractor, we have a high volume volume uh, air compressor on the tractor so we can pump up our tires uh, a lot quicker as well so uh, a lot of people are now going to this kind of central tire inflation system there's a lot more interest right. in it as well. so that's actually. from ptg though, that's from it? ptg yeah. through tractor yeah. in the uk yeah as, a, as an aftermarket fit got you so from the production line it will go to tractor would it to get this yeah to get or, this or to the dealer and tractor would all right the dealer right so, yeah 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 but she's uh, central tire inflation ready let's say so yeah. it's it's ready to take the system yeah got you it's and for in it. terms of control over your pressure you say that you yeah, through the, the terminal to, to the terminal in the screen right. so the intelliview 12 system uh, what controls it for right. us isobus and you just set some presets there you can you have can road set, field mode things like yeah, that yeah set or? the pressures in and then and away away you go uh, especially for machines and save it for machines as well yeah in, in the field that's it I mean, like I say, you can you know you can clearly see it on the front axle there, but on the rear yeah, axle, let's it's, around the back and it's really see. neat and hidden. Yeah, it is because uh, like I say it's come it comes pre-drilled uh, all of the axles and it's just yeah. sit, sitting in there. So it's in there. Or you can, oh, see, you it can the kind of see it on that side, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. So it just does it through the trumpet housing there. Yeah, through the trumpet housing yeah. and then straight into uh, straight into the wheel. I can just just about see it down there. There we go. And what sort of um, I suppose speeds, times it takes to inflate, deflate. Yeah, it all depends on the tire size, to be honest with you. Um, if you've got a you know a wider tire, letting it out is the easy part. It's yeah. pumping it up. So uh, yeah, no, we have a, a high. If you if you order it from the factory, we have a high volume compressor, uh, which is liquid cooled. Uh, compressor so to keep the compressor cooled but, right so where about uh, your compressor that's just uh, mounted so on the compressor's around the other side we can go and have a little wander around um, so that's just mounted on the side of the engine is it just yeah yeah so it's an engine driven engine driven compressor yeah. which is kind of just in in here just down there somewhere yeah and just through the grill there all oh, right just through there yep all right yeah and uh yeah, obviously it's running with the engines, which is charging. So it's similar to the air brake system on the tractor. It uses the same air. It's taking that it's air taking supply, air. right? Yep. There you go. Oh, looking smart. A nice uh, addition to T7HD. And do you think maybe at some point you may offer this system on other models? or Well, the, uh, the uh, PTG yeah, system? Yeah, the PTG system. Yeah, I mean, PTG system will integrate into all of our models. It's just this, obviously, the new HD, is it's a lot more integrated into the screen and into the uh, tractor itself. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Perfect. Well, it sounds like you're getting uh, getting the call to drive some tractors oh, now. Well, so. Let's go do our parade, yeah, did we? That's it. So yeah, David, as ever, thank you very much for your time. So no spot on is that. All right. Perfect. <laughs>
Uh, fixed bail, we 500. Did. Yeah, fixed bail, 500. And we had a look at one of your wrappers as well. Yeah, BW, so, BW 2600 yeah. twin film wrapper. Just uh, infotainment, really, wasn't it? It's yeah, just it was good, good, day, good out. day out. Good yeah. day out. Well, I say good day out. Yeah, good few days out, yeah. yeah. Right, so today, obviously, Rick Scott Graph 2022. Yeah. Uh, showing off various products, but we're going to look at this one here. Yep. New front mower or updated front mower. Oh, well, you tell me, actually. You tell me. This is our new updated 732FT uh, front mounted mower. We've made some quite uh, significant changes to improve the performance and the, and the operation of the machine. We have now free float suspension. As you can see there, we've got loads of movement left and right, and then we've also got your lateral movement front, front and back. We have a two-stage conditioner now, where the conditioner plate can be adjusted in the front and also in the back as well, and you can and you can tailor that to all crop conditions. So you you know you can really have a hard condition or you can back it off and have yeah. a very light condition, but it really does depend on, on the amount of crop going through it. That's it. Flex protect guards on the side, so you just hit that, up it goes, straight in, and there, there you go. Lift the skirt and there it is. Yeah, there, there, there we have our three-bladed uh, disc. For a, for a perfect cut in all conditions. Is that what it is? If that's what it is, because <laughs> you've always got a blade coming into cut with, yeah. the, with, the, with the triangle shaped blade. So just drop the curtain back down. Easy access on the front as well. Hit that, up it goes. You're that's straight proper, in. Isn't it? That's proper, easy, that. easy access straight in. You're up for changing your blades. Uh, blades are bolted on because you don't need to change them so often because it's three blades. Yeah, and as, you, as we see, you've always got a blade coming into cut there, like that. So. Oh, I see. Uh, Full, fully protected uh, cutter bar underneath. You've got uh, wear pads there, and then obviously your skid there as well. Yeah, an absolute ton of overlap as well. Yeah, yeah, loads of it, loads of it, there, loads, of it. Yeah. loads of it. Yeah. Right, so that's the that's the heart of the mower, the, the uh, cutter bar. We've seen the suspension, as you see there and there. We now have a, a single handle operation there, so that drops down, then locks into there. So when you take the mower off, you know, you're doing it from just one side, disconnect your pipe, and then unlock, drop your mower off, yeah. happy days. That's it. That's it. Job done. And then, yeah, you're, you've got the A-frame in there as well. A-frame in there. Yeah. We've got new swath doors so that as they, as they move in and out, they actually extend and retract All right. as you move them around that cam. So that's kind of in and out and then... Yeah, that's it. So if we slack that off, as we pull it, you'll see, you'll see it comes in and out. Yeah. To actually alter your swap with. Oh, and then it gets to a point and it starts going backwards then. That's it, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So we've got it set now, so we're going to put the crop in between the front wheels so we're not actually going to run That's on it. That's it. Yeah. And you don't want to be running on it today, do you? No, it's a bit wet today. Uh, there you go. And then, uh, yeah, so this will be a 3.2 metres, this. 3.2, yeah. yeah. Are you doing other sizes or? Uh, no, this one This one is our like sort of heavy duty uh, contractor model, yeah. 732 FT. There are ones with nylon tines, but but you know, but for today, you know, we run the one with steel, yeah, steel tire conditioner. And what you're pairing it with today? Let's have a look around the back. Yeah, what what we've got on the back? We've got our 732 FT. This has been out a couple of years, but again, matches up perfectly with the with yeah. the uh, front mower. We've got what we call a quattro link suspension system here. We've got the four links there that are actually pulling the pulling the cutter yeah. bar into work. There's an accumulator there for your suspension and the brake back. You just see in there. So. It's the same pressure if you hit there or you hit something there, it'll still break back and it goes up over your obstacle, then back down. Just like that. And you just can like keep that. going and it'll just keep come going, back down. Yeah, just comes back down. Exactly the same cutter bar as we saw on the front mower. Yeah. Um, and then again, to actually get it set, we have this little bubble indicator here. And when you bring your arm down, you want this arm running parallel to the ground. And then when you lift at the end of your row, the cutting unit lifts up in the frame, spin round, drop it back down, and then you cut it. This arm stays where it is, and your cutting unit goes back down onto the deck. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Transport position. When, when you finish, you've got, you've got two uh, spools needed, one for ground pressure and one for transport work. And then the mower folds right over, and this part of the frame here just sits in there, so it's actually at 125 okay. degrees. So it puts it more uh, weight centre. Over centre, yeah. yeah. It takes it over centre, so that so the weight transfers straight down. That's it. Perfect. Well, spot on, mate. Yeah, right. Well, let's see how it goes then. Well, I said, I said come on. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs>
Let's crack on. That's it. Perfect. Well, Mark, come here. Come here. Thank you very much. No it's problem.